When a drug company is trying to determine whether their medicine works, a typical experiment that they'll run is they'll take one group of people, give them the medicine, they'll take another group of people, give them a placebo, which is a fake medicine, and then they'll measure something. Usually there'll be a, a difference. And the big question is, is this difference due to the fact that the medicine is actually working or is this difference because of just regular randomness of the two groups? Because remember, these are two different groups of people. So you expect there to be a difference anyway. And so to help decide between those two situations, the main tool we're going to use is called probability because probability is going to tell us how likely is this difference due to just pure regular randomness of the two groups. What is probability? Probability is a number that measures how likely something is to happen. In particular, it's a number between zero and one. And actually we're more familiar with probability when it's as a percent. So when you go look up the weather, you'll see things like the chance of rain today is 60%. That 60% is a probability. So we can always convert these, uh, these numbers here to percents. Zero converted to a percent is zero percent. 1 converted to a percent is 100 percent. So probability is a number between 0 and 1 as a decimal or 0 percent, 100 percent as percents. If something has a 0 percent chance of happening or probability 0 happening, that just means that it will for sure never happen. If you ask me, are you going to go skydive? I tell you, nope. 0%. That means that that's never going to happen. If something has a 100% chance of happening or probably one happening, that means that it will for sure happen or will always happen. If you ask me, are you going to go to the party this weekend? I say, yeah, I'll be there 100%. That means I will for sure be there. If you ask me, are you going to the gym today? Uh, 20%. So how do we actually compute probability? So before I tell you how to compute probability, let me introduce some terminology. Sample space. A sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes of a probability experiment. So what do I mean by probability experiment? I just mean any process where we don't know for sure what's going to happen. So for example, if I flip this coin, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. If I roll this dice, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. If I ask you, is it going to rain today? We don't know for sure what's going to happen today. So those are all probability experiments. So even though we don't know for sure what's going to happen, we can list out everything that could happen. And that's called a sample space. So in this example of this 12 sided dice, when I roll it, I don't know for sure what's going to show up, what's going to happen but I can tell you everything that could happen. Okay. And that's called a sample space S for sample space. And we're just going to list out everything that could happen. So when I roll this dice, I could get a one, I could get a two, I could get a three and then all the way up to, this is a 12 sided dice. So the highest number I can get is a 12. Okay. And I'm just going to list all that out. I get a one, a two, three, And that's the sample space for this 12 sided dice. In other words, everything that could happen when I roll this dice, one all the way up to 12. If I ask you, is it going to rain today? Okay. We don't know for sure what's going to happen today, but we can list out everything that could happen. It could rain. or it can not rain. Okay. We don't know for sure what's going to happen, but we do know that one of these things will happen. Either it rains or it not rain. So how do we actually compute probability? Uh, the formula, the equation I have here is a formula for what's called theoretical or classical probability. And it really only applies to a situation where the outcomes in the sample space are equally likely. 
Okay, and that's, that's important for this formula. So in the dice example, if this is a fair dice, then each of these numbers here are equally likely to occur. Okay, and that's what it means to be a fair dice. So this formula would apply to the dice situation. However, for the rain situation, rain, not rain. Are these equally likely to occur? Especially here, California, when it's a drought, are these things equally likely to occur? No, right? Here, California, when it's a drought, actually not rain is more likely than rain. So these things are not equally likely to occur. So this formula would not apply to the rain situation. It would apply to the dice situation. So let's, let's do an example with the dice situation. Say I'm playing a board game that involves this dice and I need a number bigger than seven to win. Okay. That's called an, an event. I'm going to call it E for event. An event that I'm interested in here is bigger than seven. Okay. An event is really just a sub collection of the sample space. And usually we describe it using words like this, bigger than seven. But in particular, what numbers are bigger than seven? Bigger than seven would be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? That's a sub collection of the sample space. That's what an event is. But usually we describe it with words like this, bigger than seven. So how do we find the probability of getting something bigger than seven? Okay, so here's the formula. P of E, that just stands for probability of E or probability of getting something bigger than seven is, and it tells me here on the bottom, number of outcomes in the sample space. So we're just gonna count how many things could happen in the sample space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So counting how many things are in the sample space, just 12. And that's just a count of everything that, how many things could happen. On top, number of outcomes in the event E. So how many outcomes are bigger than seven? How many numbers are bigger than seven? So bigger than seven would be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's one, two, three, four, five. There are five numbers bigger than seven. And that's the probability of getting, rolling this dice and getting something bigger than seven, five over 12. That's as a fraction. We can always convert it to a decimal by just dividing. So five divided by 12. Okay, that gets us a decimal, and here it is 0 0.417, so that's rounded to three decimal places. And notice it is a number that is between 0 and 1, and then we can always convert it to a, a percent. So 41, uh, 0 0.417 as a percent, we would just move the decimal 2 to the right, and we'll get 41.7. Okay, so 0 0.417 decimal as a percent is 41.7%. So if I'm playing a board game that involves this dice and I need to get bigger than seven to win, I have a 41.7% chance of winning. And I won. Sick. Example one, a coin is tossed four times. Part A, construct a sample space for this experiment. So when I toss a coin four times, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. So part A is asking for a sample space, which is just a list of everything that could happen when I toss four coins. So I'm going to think of this as four separate coins. So a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. Because I want to distinguish between heads, 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 tails as different from heads, heads, tails, heads. So in both of those situations, there's three heads, one tail, but I want to count those as separate outcomes. And the reason why I need that to be separate outcomes is because I want each outcome to be equally likely so that it satisfies the equally likely requirement for using this formula. So let's list out everything that could happen. I think the easiest way to list out everything is to, or to organize everything is to just list it by how many heads there are. So when I uh, toss these four coins, I could get zero heads. And let's list out all the possible ways we can get zero heads. Well, there's only one way, right? To get zero heads, you would have to get all tails. So tails, 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 tails. And I think that's all. 
So next up will be one heads or one head. And let's list out all the possible ways you can get one head. Well, you can get one head by doing heads, tails, 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 right? What's another way you can get one heads? Tails, heads, tails, tails, right? So like I said, we're gonna treat those as separate. What's another way I can get one heads? I can get tails, tails, heads, tails. And then what's another way? Tails, 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 heads. And notice all I'm doing is I'm moving the one head from the first position to the second slot, to the third slot, to the fourth slot. And I think that's all the possible ways you can get one heads. So moving on, two heads. This one's a little harder. So we're gonna list out all the possible ways we can get two heads. We can get heads, heads, tails, tails. And then we flip it, this will be tails, tails, heads, heads. Okay, that's another one. What else can happen? I can alternate them, heads, tails, heads, tails, and then flip that, and that will be tails, heads, tails, heads. Is that all? Is there anything else? Is there other ways that we can get two heads here? We can have the two heads in the middle. And then flip that. That will be heads, tails, tails, heads. Putting the two heads on the outside. Is there any other way we can get two heads? I can't think of any. So let's, let's move on. Next up will be three heads. What are all possible ways we can get three heads? Well, one way is heads, 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 tails. And notice here that three heads is the same thing as saying one tail, right? So this list should be similar to the one heads list. So we, what we can do is just move the, the one tail from the last slot to the third, to the second, to the fourth. And that should get, or the first. And that should give us all, all the possible ways we can get three heads. Okay, so. Heads, 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 tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads. And then moving the tails to the first slot would be tails, heads, heads, heads. And I think that's all the ways we can get three heads. And then four heads. What are all the possible ways we can get four heads? Well, there's only one way, which is all of them heads. And I did give a hint that there should be 16 outcomes total. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so I think we have them all. So once we have the list of everything that could happen, we can now answer some probability questions. Part B, what's the probability that there are exactly three heads? Okay, so to find probability, on the bottom is just a count of all the outcomes in our sample space. So here's our sample space. Count how many outcomes are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then for the top, how many outcomes have exactly three heads? So exactly three heads. That would be these right here, right? They have exactly three heads. So there are one, two, three, four. And that's the probability as a fraction. We can always convert this to a decimal by dividing four divided by 16. And that gets us 20, 0 0.25. That's as a decimal. And then we can always convert that to a percent by moving the decimal two to the right. Two to the right would be 25%. So on your lab, um, you can just enter the, the fraction. But you should know that you can always convert it to a decimal and then to a percent, which is what we're actually more familiar with. Part C, what's the probability that there are at least two heads? Okay, on the bottom, still the same, right? total number of outcomes in our sample space. We said there were 16. 
Up top, we're going to count how many are at least two heads. Now, at least two, what does at least two mean? All right, if I tell you you have to be at least 21 to purchase alcohol, what does that mean? At least 21 means 21 or over, right? 21 or more. So at least two means two or more. So how many of these outcomes have two or more heads? Two or more would be all of these with two heads, these with three, and these with four. Okay, so all of those are two or more. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so there are eleven that have two or more heads. Part D. What's the probability that there are more than two heads? Okay, bottom will be the same, 16. For the top, we'll just count more than two. So how many have more than two? More than two means you, you don't include two. So more than two would be the three heads and the four heads. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Part E, what's the probability that there are at most three heads? Bottom will be 16. What does at most three mean? So at most three is similar to the at least two, right? At least two means two or more. At most three means three or less. Okay, so pay attention to those keywords, at least and at most. You'll, you'll see those a lot this uh, in this unit. So for the top here, we're going to count how many outcomes have three or less heads. So three or less would be all the threes, all the twos, all the ones, and all the zeros. Okay, so three or less would be three, two, ones, and zeros. So all of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Part F, what's the probability that the first and last tosses are the same? Bottom will be the same, the total number of outcomes in our sample space, which was 16. And then how many have the first and last toss the same? So first and last toss, the same. So either having tails, tails, first or last, or heads, heads. So that counts. It's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so those are, I count eight where the first and last tosses are the same. Example two a four sided die and a six sided die are rolled. Here's a four sided, here's a six sided. When I roll these dice, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. Part A is asking for a sample space, which is just a list of everything that could happen. So whenever we have two dice, I think the easiest way to list everything that could happen is with a table. On one side of the table, I'm going to list everything that could happen on the four side of the die. Okay, this is the four side of the die. Um, you could get one, two, three, all the way up to four. On the other side, I'm going to list everything that could happen on the six sided die. This is a six sided die, so you could get a one, two, three, all the way up to a six. And what I care about are the boxes on the inside of the table. So let me separate out these numbers up top and these numbers on the left side. So each box on the inside of the table represents something that could happen when I roll these two die. So for example, 
This box here represents getting a three on a four-sided and a two on a six-sided. This box right here represents getting a two on a four-sided and a four on a six-sided. Let's do one more. This box here represents getting a one on a four-sided and a six on a six-sided. So each box on the inside of the table represents something that could happen when I roll these two dice. Now let's take a look at these questions here. Part B, what's the probability that the sum is five? The sum. Part C, what's the probability that the sum is greater than seven? Part D, what's the probability that the sum, the sum, the sum? All these questions are asking about the sum. So sum meaning adding them up. So this represents a situation that shows up a lot in board games where you roll two dice and you add them up. So because this, uh, all these questions are asking about the sum, inside these boxes, I'm going to put the sum. This box here represents getting a one and a one. The sum, or add them up, that will be a two. This box represents getting a one and a two. If I add those up, that's a three. This box, one and a three. Add them up, that's a four. One and a four, that's a five. One and a five, that is a six. One and a six, that's a seven. And then so on. So two and a one, that's a three. Four. Okay, so once again, inside each box, I'm writing the sum. So this eight here, I got that eight because that's a three and a five. If I add those up, is eight. And I'm putting the sum because all these questions are asking about the sum. So these questions are asking about the sum, which is why I'm putting the sum inside those boxes. Now we can answer the questions. Part B, what's the probability that the sum of the dice is five? So probability on the bottom, we're just going to write um, how many outcomes are in my sample space. The sample space here, remember, are the boxes on the inside. So how many boxes are on the inside of my table? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. A better way to do that is probably just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there are one, two, three, four rows. So six times four, 24. Up top, how many have a sum that is five. The sums we wrote in red. So how many of them have a five? One, two, three, four. And remember, we're only looking at the numbers on the inside. So don't, don't count the numbers on the, on the outside. One, two, three, four. We could convert this to a decimal and then a percent, but leave it as a, a fraction for the lab. Part C, what's the probability that the sum is greater than seven? Okay, the bottom, still the same, right? We're counting how many outcomes are in our sample space, which is represented by the boxes on the inside. How many boxes on the inside? We counted 24. How many of them have a sum greater than seven? So greater than seven means bigger than seven. Bigger than seven would be these eights, these nines, and these tens. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Part D, what's the probability that the sum is at most three? Bottom, still the same. What does at most three mean? At most three means that the biggest it could be is three. In other words, at most three means three or less. So how many boxes have a sum that is three or less? The sums, again, are the red numbers. So how many of them have red numbers that are three or less? So three or less would be the threes and the twos. So that's one, two, three. And then remember, we're not counting the numbers on the outside, so just the numbers on the inside of our table. Part E, what's the probability that the sum is at least five? Bottom, still the same. At least five. What does at least five mean? 
So this one's easy for me to remember because I just think of at least 21. You have to be at least 21 to buy alcohol. At least 21 means 21 or more. So at least five means five or more. So five or more. So how many of these have sums that are five or more? So five or more would be all the fives, all the sixes, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18. Part F, what's the probability that the sum is less than five? Bottom number is still the same, 24. Less than five, less than five would be the fours, the threes, and the twos. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, remember, don't count the numbers on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six. Example three, two six-sided die are rolled. So here are two six-sided dice. When I roll these, these two dice, I don't know for sure what's gonna happen. Part A is asking for a sample space, which is just a list of everything that could happen. So anytime I have two dice, the easiest way for me to list everything that could happen is to make a table. So on one side, I'm gonna list everything that could happen on one of the dice. Let's do it for the, the blue one. So it's a six-sided die. And this is for the blue one. Six-sided die, I get a one all the way up to a, a six. On the other side, I'm gonna list everything that could happen on the other dice, which is the red one. Six-sided die, um, I can get a one all the way up to a, a six. And again, what I care about are the boxes on the inside. So let me separate out these numbers that are on the top and on the, the left side. Since those numbers are just acting as labels here. So what I care about are the boxes on the inside. So each box on the inside represents something that could happen when I roll these two dice. So for example, this box here represents getting a four on the blue one and a two on the red one. This box here represents getting a two on the blue one and a five on the red one. And let's do one more here. This box represents getting a two on the blue one and a three on the red one. And now let's read these questions here. Part B, what's the probability that the larger number is four? What's the probability that the larger number is less than six? Notice that all these questions are asking about the larger number. So this is a situation that also shows up in a lot of board games where you roll two dice and then you take the bigger number or you roll a dice and then you're allowed to roll again and then you're allowed to keep the higher number. So inside these boxes, I'm gonna put the bigger number. This box represents getting a one and a one. The bigger number would be one. This box represents getting a one and a two. The bigger number would be two. This box, one and a three, bigger number would be three. This box, one and a four, bigger number would be four. One and a five, that would be a five. One and a six, that would be a six. Two and a one, bigger number would be two. Two and a two, will be two, two and a three will be a three, two and a four will be a four, two and a five will be a five, two and a six, bigger number will be six, and so on. Okay, so once again, inside each box, I'm writing the larger number because these questions are asking about the larger number.
Okay, so for example, this box here represents getting a five and a four. The bigger number is five. Now let's answer these questions. Part B, what's the probability that the bigger number is four? So on the bottom, we're gonna uh, write how many numbers, how many outcomes we have in our sample space. Our sample space here is represented by the boxes on the inside. So how many boxes do we have on the inside? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Six times six, so that's 36. So there are 36 boxes on the inside. So you can count them one by one, um, or just there's six in each row and there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Up top, how many of them have a larger number that is four? So the larger numbers are written in red here. So how many of them have a red number that's four? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, don't count the numbers on the outside, just the numbers on the inside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Part C, what's the probability that the larger number is less than six? Bottom number will be the same, okay, which is how many outcomes are in my sample space, which is represented by how many boxes are on the inside. And how many of them have a larger number less than six? Less than six would be all the fives, all the fours, threes, twos, and ones. That's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Part D, what's the probability that the larger number is at least five? Bottom number is still the same. At least five, what does at least five mean? At least five means five or more. So five or more would be all the fives and all the sixes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And again, only count the numbers on the inside of the table, not, not on the outside. Part E, what's the probability that the larger number is at most three? Bottom number, still the same. At most means three or less. Yeah, so get used to the terminology at least and at most. So at most three means three or less. Three or less, so how many of them have a larger number that is three or less? In other words, how many of these have red number that are three or less? That will be all the threes, all the twos, and all the ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Part F, what's the probability that the larger number is greater than three? Bottom number is still the same, 36. Greater than three would be all the fours, all the fives, and all the sixes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. In the examples that we talked about so far, we talked about flipping coins and rolling dice. Notice that in those examples, we didn't actually flip coins or roll dice, right? We, we use what's called a sample space, which was a list of everything that could happen if we were to flip coins and roll dice. And then to find the probabilities, all we did was we counted from the sample space. So that's called the theoretical approach to finding probabilities. Another approach is called the experimental or empirical approach to probability. And in this approach, you actually are going to roll dice. So to find the probability in this situation, you actually do the experiment, like flipping the coin or rolling dice, and then you count how many times the event happens. On top, you just put how many times the event happens. On the bottom, how many times you did the experiment. So let me actually do one of our uh, examples using the experimental probability approach. And the one I wanna do is in our example two, where we talked about the four-sided and the six-sided.
And in that, that example, we talked about the sum. Right? We rolled these two dice, and then we added them up. And what I want to talk about, the event I want to talk about is what we talked about in part C here, which was the probability of getting a sum that's bigger than seven. Okay, so let me actually write down the answer we got uh, in that example. So we got a six over 24. So the event I want to talk about is sum that is greater than seven. And then from our example two, our answer was six out of 24. And let me actually convert this to a, a decimal, six divided by 24. is 0 0.25. And remember, we got this using the theoretical approach, which means we didn't actually roll these two dice, right? We, we list, we found a sample space, and then we got the top and bottom by, by counting. So now I wanna do it using the experimental approach, which means I'm gonna roll these two dice and keep track of how many times I get a number, I get a sum that's bigger than seven, okay? So here it goes, I'm actually gonna roll this a lot. Okay, so one and a two, that's a three. Six and a two, that's an eight, so that's one time, that's bigger than seven. Three hours later. Okay, so I got a little carried away. Um, so I rolled the dice 5,814 times and I got a sum greater than seven, 1,483 times. So the experimental probability So how many times did I get a sum greater than seven? 1,483. And then how many times did I actually roll the dice? 5,814. I have no life. So let me divide this and actually get an answer. 1483 divided by 5814. Okay, round to three decimal places. This is 0 0.255. Now, I wanna compare the two answers. This answer here, 0 0.25, we got this answer using a theoretical approach, which means we didn't actually roll the dice. Zero point two five five. I got this answer by actually rolling the dice. This was the experimental approach. And notice that the answers are they're different, but they're they're pretty close. Okay, so that's what this, this law of large numbers is saying: is that if you are doing an experiment a large number of times, the answer should be pretty close. And if you continue doing the experiment even more times the experimental answer is going to get closer and closer to the theoretical answer. All right, that's a brief introduction to probability. Have a great day. See you next time.